the old horseshoe on the banks of the Olentangy, home of the Ohio State Buckeyes in one of the great settings in all of college football. Boy, the scarlet and gray already rocking this house. A Big Ten showdown is coming. Conference implications of plenty that could resonate for the rest of the season. As we'll see, the Nebraska Cornhuskers taking on the second-ranked team in the land, the Ohio State Buckeyes. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. The Buckeyes will kick it away to start us off. He'll bring it out from inside his own 10. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. The Cornhuskers offense will start this game off. And here's the man they'll try to feed the football to no matter what the coverage looks like, Jesse. He's their best player on offense, and I like the way this coaching staff moves him around and tries to create good matchups to take advantage of, David. And that makes it so hard to defend. When the receiver lines up in the same spot every time, I can bring extra coverage. Man, use this guy all over the field as a weapon of mass destruction. Well, when you talk Nebraska football, it always comes down to their ability running it on offense, whether it's the option or whether it's conventional. They've got a long and illustrious history of great running backs, and this guy is on the field for a reason. His vision, his ability to make people miss, run with toughness, he can do it all. And I think they'll give him two on that one, second and eight coming up. I like feeding my guy. I like getting my running back touches feeding the ball so he can break some of those big runs. But I'm also okay with these little ones. Set the tone, stay balanced. This crowd going to try to make life miserable for these guys. Hand off from the shotgun. One step wrap, two step squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. They have it at the 43, third and short, trying to avoid making a decision on fourth down. Back to pass, it's Rayola. Got him downfield. They've got the defense reeling right now with that big play to the 29. Talking to this coaching staff, they felt they had matchups in the passing game that they could win, and they wanted to test this defense and see if they could take the top off. Well, you saw it right there. Opening drive of the game. They're being aggressive. They're taking a shot, and they come up with a big one. And trust me, fellas, they're going to keep taking those shots because they've got some dudes outside. And the defense holds firm. No pickup at all on that play. How about the defender being a heat-seeking missile? He was on radar lock. He found the football and flew down with some bad intentions. They got nothing on the last play. It's second and 10. On the move, it's Irvin. They'll give him one to the 28-yard line. A little less room to work with now as the ball is at the 28 and it's third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. Fires to the right. And they can't make the connection on third down. Nice job by the defense. They're mixing up their look there. Third and long in field goal range. They go zone coverage. So everybody on the back end has the eye on the quarterback and they're able to break on the ball, force the incompletion. Now on fourth down, they'll send out the field goal unit. He's going to try to punch one through from 45 yards away. Absolutely perfect. And the first points of the day come on that field goal. I know one thing this head coach does every week is he challenges his guys to start fast. And it's so important today, playing on the road in this kind of environment. You saw a nice drive. They didn't get the touchdown they would have loved. But still, kicking that field goal and taking this early lead, that's a statement for the visiting team.
So after the made field goal, they'll kick it away and rely on their defense. And he takes this from inside the five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. So the Ohio State Buckeyes offense headed onto the field. Our first look at them today. This is just a great matchup to watch on the outside and who can win downfield in the passing game. Man, this reminds me of 1997, Charles Woodson versus David Boston. Two physical athletes that are going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe all game long. Yeah, two alphas, two guys that play the positions where you have to have such confidence, cornerback, wide receiver. Let's see this throwdown. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. From the gun, the running back tries to hit the hole. Really good pickup on second down there. Leaves him with third and two. And as an offense, having success on a run play like that early in the game just opens up all the possibilities of your playbook moving forward. Play action, running the ball, throwing the ball, screens, anything is at your disposal at this point. Running the option, it's Howard. He'll have the first down as he gets it to the 28-yard line before he stopped. This quarterback does an outstanding job in his preparation, watching film and understanding when he has to pull the ball on these types of run plays. Great job keying on the defender and quickly making the right decision to pull it and then go get north and get the first. He'll pull it on the read. Got the first down and still on his feet. And chunk plays are the name of the game, and they get one here before the defense finally makes a stop. Well, this is one of the fastest quarterbacks in college football, and that's why the option's a good idea, because if he can get out in space and he has a chance to get downfield, he is really difficult to tackle, and he's very difficult to catch, as you saw in that last play, getting a first down. Motion from the offense. Softened him up with a run and now to throw. He's going to run it. And he avoids the hit and slides after the short game. Welcome to the frustrating reality of college football. Like, the guy at the quarterback spot, he can just do that. Pull it down, get positive yards, makes the defense have to account for him every single play. Here comes the offense on second down. Running behind that left side. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Now that's what you're trying to do as a defense. Limit those damages when they run the football. Get them on the ground, short gains to set your defense for positive situations down the road. Now on third down, this offense has been rolling. Can the defense stand tall? Looking downfield, it's Howard. Quickly to the tight end. Putting together a real scoring threat here as they pick up the first down at the 36. And had they not picked up that first down, it would have been decision time for the head coach, right? You're kind of in no man's land on the fridge. Are you trying a long field goal? Are you going for it on fourth down? But because of the execution there and the nice throw, let's keep this drive going. Let's see if we can get six. Leaves it with the running back. Little too soft in that run defense. He picks up four to the 32. It's just so nice to know you can start off on first down with positive plays. Positive yards, hand the football off, set up a good second down. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. They'll try it over the left side. They make the stop as he gets it inside the 30 to the 28, a gain of four. I think he run that play on second down knowing it's going to make third down easy. You're not trying to hit a home run. You don't need the big play right now. Now you know third down, everything's on the table, everything's available, high success rate. They'll snap it from the 28 in field goal range, but it's third and short. He'll do it himself. Discards a man. And he picks up the first down, and he does it. I'm not going to say spin move. That was a pirouette. It was elegant. It was beautiful. And the Buckeyes come to the line with a new set of downs. 
out of the gun. The inside handoff, looking for a crease. This defense has got to get better at tackling in the open field or gang tackling because if you need three or four guys to bring a guy down, <laughs> have fun with that. They can really be aggressive after that last play. It's second and three. Dropping back, it's Howard. Gets open down the middle. The Buckeyes get enough for the first down. And when you run those drag routes, it just takes a little bit of know-how. And when I say that, the receiver's got to understand, find space. My quarterback's going to find me. He's looking for that space at the same time. Nice throw, nice catch. Way to get the first down. Down to the 12-yard line. It's first down. Reading the option, it's Howard. And he'll pick up one. It brings up second and nine. Well, the QB decided to keep it on that one. And listen, if you had his athleticism, you'd want to keep it, too. Almost every time they run these types of option plays. But he's just going to have to do a good job of understanding when to hand it off, when to pitch it, and try to keep this defense on their heels and read his keys. He's got a lot of talent. Just got to make sure he's making the right decisions moving forward. And he waltzes in for the score. Touchdown, Ohio State! And this running back is so dangerous down close to the end zone. He's got wiggle, he's got great vision and burst. And he showed all of those attributes right there. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And the extra point makes it 7-3. to three. That is what they mean when they say ball control. A 14-play touchdown drive. And the capper on that drive, the 10-yard touchdown run. They're just about ready to kick it away. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Bunch formation for these receivers. The give to the running back from the shotgun. Ran to that daylight to pick up six to the 22. Well, guys, Ohio State has the lead here. And we've come to the end of the first as we take a moment to check out the stats so far. Now to see if these guys can get back in the game as we open the second quarter. Win with the running game on first down, now back at it. Trying play action. Makes the grab on the left. That's the kind of play that can really get you going as they get it out to the 36. And after giving up that completion, guys, I wonder if the defense is going to decide to stay in zone or maybe mix things up a little more man coverage, maybe blitz. Now from the 36-yard line, it's first and 10. To the ground with the back. Nice, solid form tackle from this sophomore. And sticking to the run. I tell you what, a lot of teams that are really good are really stubborn, and they continue to run the football even with little success. So this offense is going to continue to focus on running the football, you can tell. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Trying to get the edge on the jet sweep. Pretty good effort on that one to work his way up to the 42. Great job by the defense there slowing down that jet sweep. And a big key was the defensive end containing the play, forcing the receiver to cut back inside to where all the traffic was. Ball is at the 42-yard line, close to four-down territory. Here's third and short. Got it on the outside. It's going. 
They didn't quite get that route run deep enough to pick up the first down. Now they've got a fourth and short. And I think everybody at home tends to yell at their television set. Why aren't you getting past the first down marker? Why did you run your route short? Defense did a good job knowing where that was. But now, fourth down, offense has to make a decision. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He'll call for the fair catch here. Here comes the Ohio State offense onto the field. That running game was impressive, taking them right down for a touchdown last time, David. Yeah, just mauling. No secret play calls, just simply we are more physical than you, and we're pounding the football right at you, Paul. So if you're on offense this next drive, take a look at their safeties and see if they're creeping up into the box. Because of your success running the football, this might be time to take a shot down the field and play action. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. He'll try the left side. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Linebackers have such an amazing responsibility. Got to play run, got to play pass. How about this? Seeing the run aggressively getting downhill and getting in the backfield and making the tackle for a loss. This defense has kept them backed up. Now one more stop and they can get off the field on third and long. Looking for a man. It's Howard. And the quarterback goes down all the way back at his four-yard line. Well, the offense got themselves into trouble. They're back in their own end. It's an obvious passing situation. So the defense is just pinning their ears back, and they're trying to get after him. They could not allow him to escape, step up, get rid of the football. They take a sack very close to the goal line. The Buckeyes will try to pin them back with the punt. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. Sometimes avoiding disaster is the best thing. The punter just gets it out of there. This guy is a daring punt return man. He's not going to settle for the fair catch. A solid return gets a little bit of ground for the offense. The give on the inside. And the running back didn't get much there. Nice job by the defense. You can tell they're focused in on this running back, on this run game, being physical, getting knockbacks, and limiting his carries. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Right back to it. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. It's hard to run on a defense that comes off the ball like that and runs to the football like that. Good luck. No holes anywhere. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Grabbed in the middle, it's Irvin. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. And as an offense, that's just why you cannot get behind the sticks in these types of situations. Third in California is hard to complete and is hard to convert for anybody. And even though the running back is able to do something positive on that third down play, it's just too many yards to gain. Now they're forced to punt. Never a doubt for this big-footed guy. 49-yard field goal is good. After putting up a three spot, the kickoff unit set to go. On the move from inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. The Buckeyes roll that offense back out there. Out of the shoot, quick toss to the right. They stop him just short of the first down, but it will be second and inches coming up. Yeah, I don't know defensively if you want to keep giving this guy that much cushion because when he gets the ball in space, he's able to shake all these defenders and turns a five-yard completion into a first down. Now on second down. They'll run it from the gun. 
They'll mark him down at the 40 after ripping off 10. Yeah, and there you go again. Ohio State bringing the ground game. They, they typically do that, Reese. That's pretty normal for them. They've built their entire program around it. Archie Griffin, two-time Heisman Trophy winner. You go back to Hopalong Cassidy. I mean, the Buckeyes love to run the ball no matter how many times they spend the magic beat. From the gun, running back on the move. Run game is good. Balance is good. Now, listen, if the run game isn't good, then you got to pass the football a little bit more. But sometimes you got to keep them honest, take them chunk by chunk. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Back to throw. It's Howard. Zings it complete to the right. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. This noise, this crowd, and you can feel the jolt of energy going through the Buckeyes. Well, everybody loves five-yard runs, Reese, but come on, let's get real. When you're chucking the ball down the field and you've got great quarterback play and wide receivers out wide that are making plays, fans go nuts, and the horseshoe is one of the loudest places in all of college football. Throws for the tight end. A strike downfield. Touchdown, Buckeyes! That is the ultimate grab and go for the score. Wait, can, can I get the director to give me a replay of that? I want to count the defenders at one, two, three. I mean, there's no way they had 11, right? I mean, that, that is frustrating. Defensively, what are you taught? Like, make them earn it, right? Play, play man, press up on them, make them earn it, make them go the length of the field, don't give up big plays, or just give up big plays and don't have anybody in the camera shot and don't have anybody there to even miss a tackle. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And they kick it through for the extra point, and they have an eight-point lead. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they put the points on the board with that 37-yard touchdown pass. The kickoff team out there set to boot it away. And he hauls it in, and everybody's on the edge of their seats. And the returner will be brought down. And here comes the Nebraska offense back onto the field. They'll run the RPO and fire to the right. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. And a big key on that throw to the slot receiver, guys, is putting the ball out in front. The location of the throw is what helped that guy get extra yards after the catch. With a first down, they'll snap it from the 32. They'll run it from the gun. Finding a way to put that foot in the ground and get it up to the 37-yard line. I know the passing game sells and the passing game is exciting, but... It's not exciting to get five or six yards of pop on the ground, but it will be very successful. Second down here, and maybe they've got time to get one more snap off before the two-minute warning. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we have ourselves a ball game, and they have a chance to take the lead here before the half. Let's see what they've got on second down. Looking to throw, it's Rayola. Trying to get to it. It's complete to the right. Stopped at the 47 after a 10-yard gain. You know, sometimes when you're throwing against zone coverage, you need time for the routes to develop. So nice job by the quarterback there, being patient, allowing his receivers to work themselves open. Offense rushing to the line of scrimmage. Clock is stopped for the first down. They'll try to get it off quickly. Looking to move it through the air. And the ball comes out. What a disastrous play. Defense just cradling that fumble and securing it. You know, as quarterbacks, you've got to be good in the pocket. Even when things are collapsing, you've got guys swiping at it. You've got to have two hands on the football. It didn't do a really good job with ball security there, and that led to the fumble. Here comes the Ohio State offense onto the field. 
Guys, it's been an entertaining first half and not a lot of time left to put some more points on the board. No, but you got this possession right here to maybe go into the half tied up. So good first half, but a great way, Jesse, to end this first half. Yeah, you'd love to take that momentum into the second half. And listen, this offense practices two minute every single week for this exact situation. They'd love to be able to go generate a few more points before taking it into the locker room. On first and 10, trying to strike from the 15. He wants to throw. Grabbed on the outside, it's Tate. And that defense doesn't allow a cutback, and they get him out of bounds after a short game. My old coach said, you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. Going to work on second down in the red zone is still some ground to cover to pick up that first down. Pre-snap motion in the backfield. To the air, it's Howard. Starting to feel a little pressure. And they get to the quarterback and knock him down back at the 16. This offense is going to have to come up with a plan to block this guy. He is an absolute monster, and he showed you all his tools on that sack. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. From the gun, wants to pass. He got it! And he will score! Touchdown, Ohio State! Man, it's not an accident. They're featuring this guy. His second receiving touchdown of the game. That's your job as a coach. Find my playmakers, get them the ball, so they can do damage and have games like this right here. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they close the deal with a 16-yard throw for the touchdown. Kickoff team has the ball teed up, and they're about ready to go. He'll bring it back from inside his five. And he's able to pick his way through the traffic nicely for a good return on that one before he's brought down. They'll throw it on first down. Catch in the middle, it's Fidel. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. A little bit more to go after that last completion. They'll try to pick it up on second down. He's looking to throw. And he just threw that one away. Safe move, didn't see anything, lived to play another play. And how loud is it in this building? This is crazy. This, these fans are going absolutely nuts. And I used to love when the fans got involved, and I'm on defense, because it messes with the snap count, it messes with the communication, and it can really rattle an offense. He's looking to throw on third and short. That's caught, it's Boyd. He's out of bounds, but not before picking up enough for the first down. That's tough on the defense there. Third down, you're in zone coverage. Everybody's watching the quarterback, and you're trying to make a break on the ball, but he just got it out of his hands too quickly, and the throw was too accurate. Really nothing you can do there, and it's now a fresh set of downs. And the Huskers will have it first and ten. He's looking to throw it. Just had to get rid of that one. Good job to fight another play. And now on second down for this offense. They'll run play action. Good job to avoid the negative play and just get rid of that thing.
Ball is at the 41 as this defense tries to force the punt on third and long. Looking downfield, it's Rayola. And the pressure gets to him. Down goes the quarterback. Timeout is called, and it's the defense wanting to make sure that everyone's on the same page for this big down. The Cornhuskers will bring the punt team onto the field. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Perhaps feeling that coverage coming signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 25. Running out of time here in the first half, they're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. So runs like that that can really help your field position as they're up at the 35. Quick timeout call by the offense after the play. Just enough time for one final play of the half. They'll ride the running back and leave it with him. Still on his feet at the 45. And he's brought down after a nice game. We've played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Fellas, looks like we've got a great one going down in Columbus today. And we'd be remiss if we didn't start this halftime report by acknowledging the sparkling play of this tight end. The guy's like an aircraft carrier out there as a blocker. And then when he releases and shows off that speed and route running, he's almost unguardable. Gotta believe he won't be able to go anywhere in this second half without someone attached to his hip. Time to put an end to the speculation and find out they're inside the horseshoe. The Huskers will kick it off to start the second half. The returner will field it and try to set up his offense in great field position. And the coverage team able to wrestle him down. The Buckeyes roll that offense back out there. He'll keep it himself. Not much working there. It'll be second and nine. Yeah, and it's a nice job by this defense understanding. Listen, that QB is a threat. And they're going to run all kinds of options, and he's going to run the football. They were dialed in and got that sucker to the ground. And here comes the offense on second down. Back to throw, it's Howard. Using his legs to buy some time. Got to protect the merchandise. Gets down without taking a hit. It's just so nice to have a QB under center nowadays in football. You can trust these guys. You put so much on their plate, and you tell them, go get positive yards when it's there. And a lot of these guys are such great athletes, they do it with ease. This is the type of play that can give the offense momentum. Third and short from inside the 20. From the gun, wants to pass. Complete with conviction on the crosser. He'll make a play on third down. He's got enough for the first as they mark it at the 32. He might have expected to see this DB up in his receiver's kitchen instead. Nice little zone, and they pick up the first. Man, offenses are getting so good, Reese, at seeing the holes in the zone, knowing you're in zone, knowing where to sit down, how to make it an easy pitch and catch for the quarterback, and that's what it was on third and short. That play just never had a chance. They knock him down for a loss of five. Well, the linebacker's showing you read and react. He knew exactly where that running play was going, and he beat the football to the line of scrimmage and forced the TFL. He'll try to overcome that last play on second and 15. Wide out in motion. On second down, looking again to throw. Grab behind the line. It's Smith. They get him down after he makes the catch. I like the decision by the quarterback here. Just get the ball out of your hands. Get it to your playmaker. A lot of times he'll dance and make even bigger plays than he did here, but it was still a positive game. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third and long, try to convert through the air. They're setting up the screen. Didn't have much room to run and not a whole lot of help. Short game there and still plenty of ground to cover for the first down. You got to love that. On defense, one of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives alive? Right there, tackling the catch. You gave up the completion. whoop de you do You've set up fourth and long. You're going to get the ball back. Go get some water and celebrate. Fair catch called for and made. The Cornhuskers ready to go back to work on offense. 
they hope to be able to cash in on this drive, David, after having to punt it last time. Yeah, and I think this offense needs to start it with the first play. You need to be successful and productive on that first play, and it gets you in less predictable situations. No doubt, too. Don't you just feel like there's a little bit more sense of urgency on this drive? It just feels like they've got to be able to put some points up on the board here. Still some work to do after that last completion at second down. From the gun, the running back has it. They get him at the 42, but he picked up 10 there. That has got to be demoralizing if you're on defense because they just ran the ball right up the middle, down your throats, and they gashed you. It's first and 10 for this offense from the 42. They're getting this guy lathered up. The run game just has not been working for this offense all game long. We saw it on that last play as well. Just not getting enough push up front on the offensive line. They haven't been physical enough. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. The give to the left side. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Great team defense on that one play. Everybody doing their job. People winning their one-on-ones. D linemen staying in their gaps. Linebackers and DBs filling. You just can't do it better. Guys, this offense is already reeling down. Multiple possessions really need to cash in on this drive. He puts a lot of air under it down the sideline. And trying to put points on the board on third down. Now they're staring at fourth down. You see it in football all the time, right? I get a matchup on the outside. You want to try to play man coverage? I'm going to let my wide receiver try to go up and make a play. A lot of times the wide receiver wins. Not this time. And the Huskers will punt it away on fourth down. Not going to risk a return here. He'll make the fair catch. Here comes the Ohio State offense onto the field. They missed an opportunity to extend this lead the last time they had it, Jesse. Yeah, they got to be able to regain that momentum, right? Go back to what was working earlier on in this one. And, David, to me, that starts with being the more physical team. No, I definitely agree. Being the more physical team, but understanding the situation of the game. You're still winning. You got the football back. Now put a nice drive together and execute. And the Buckeyes want to pick up the tempo. Quickly out to the tight end. They stop him just a link or two short of the first, and man, what they can do on second down here. Always nice to have that security blanket of the tight end. And it's nice to have a tight end that can line up in different areas of the field, too. It's not always going to be in a three-point stance. He can sometimes be in the backfield. You could flex him out into the slot. They might even try to put this guy out at wide receiver in the split end position and see what he can do there, because this guy is a weapon. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. How about that defense? In the backfield, nowhere to go right away. You could tell they were playing the run game all the way, and they got in the backfield and got the tackle for a loss. Lining up to convert third down. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Muscling ahead on third and short. Solid work and execution there. They'll have a first down as they mark it at the 40. Yeah, a nice job dialing up that short yardage situation play call there, David. They needed one yard, they picked up two. Yeah, great job up front, great job by the back, knowing where they need to go. Nice having a hole you can get through and not have to just do it all on your own as a running back. Off the play fake on first down, the throw. And the defense is all over the quarterback, and down he goes. Oftentimes with play action, you're asking the quarterback to hold on to the ball a bit longer, and you're asking this offensive line to hold up and pass pro a bit longer. Against this athletic front seven on defense, it's going to be tough. That's the last thing you want as an offense, a negative play, a sack on first down. Now the play fake. 
Got it behind the line. It's Judkins. And they pick up just a few on that completion. I want to get my running backs the ball in space as much as possible. And sometimes it doesn't work in the running game. But I can throw it to them. I can try to create some space out wide, dump them the football, let them make some catches, and see if I can't get some big plays out of them. On third and long, you'll have to turn it loose deep. And he's got it inside the 35. Touchdown, Buckeyes! And the beatdown has ensued. Man, how hard is it to defend when you have a weapon like this and running back that can play wide receiver? You can design ways to get the football in his hand. Palmer, once you get it in his hands, he'll do the rest. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, and oftentimes those are easier throws for quarterbacks. And these running backs, they're just naturally so good when they have the football out in space. Their vision, their creativity, their ability to make people miss. And this guy showed you right there a difficult, difficult guy to stop now if you're this defense moving forward. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And with the extra point, the score is 28 to 6. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. And here comes the Nebraska offense back onto the field. They'll run it out of the shotgun. And this one will be stopped for no gain. It's an offense that takes pride in being physical. They try to get it going on the ground, but no gain on that one. Just nowhere to run. Not a lot of wiggle room for the ball carrier. This defense came in knowing that they had to match their physicality. Let's see if they can keep it up. They got nothing on the last play. It's second and ten. To the air, it's Rayola. Fires to the big fella. Nice pitch and catch there, and they'll have enough for the first down. Well, I know the tight end did some good things after the catch, but got to give the quarterback credit, too, for the location of the throw. Because he put it out in front of his big man, he was able to make the catch and accelerate, creating some distance there between him and the defense. Ball is at the 35. It's first and 10. Fast motion from the offense. Looking for room. It's Irvin. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. You see all this movement in football now. All the stem and the defensive line, they're sliding right before the snap, creating confusion for the offensive line. Then they're moving back and stunting. Really good job by the defense. Continue to move, continue to stunt, continue to get in the backfield and make this life hard on this running back. Pocket starts to collapse. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. Well, guys, Ohio State has the lead here. And they've built a comfortable lead after three quarters of play. Let's take a look at how we've gotten here. One more quarter to play, and it might be unlikely, but hey, it's college football. Comebacks happen. On third and long, hoping to throw beyond the sticks. Finds his man. It's Lloyd. Well, the defense needs one more stop. They did a nice job not giving up a first down that last one, but with the lead late like this, one more stop, and they're going to win this game. Down in the fourth quarter, it's too late for empty possessions. They'll go for it on fourth down. He'll try to throw and pick up the first down. He tosses one high and deep down the left side. And that pass is caught at the 25. The offense has struggled. They're not going to win this game. But trust me, this coaching staff is still trying to find things to build off of for next week. And after an explosive play like that, maybe they can generate just a little bit of momentum and gain a little bit of confidence that they can keep coaching up heading into their next game.
The Cornhuskers are rolling down the field. It's a draw. Offensive linemen love when you sneak in draws, when you sneak in screens. It holds these defensive linemen accountable. You want to rush the quarterback? You want to fly upfield every single play? We'll sneak right behind you and get some yardage. Good spot after that seven-yard pickup on first down. It's second and three. They feed him again. A run up the middle is stuffed for no gain. Defense is about firing off, hitting the offensive guys, and staying in your gaps. Everybody knowing where they're supposed to be. You could tell the defense, everyone was right where they're supposed to be, nowhere to run. They've controlled the football on this drive. The eighth play will be a third and three. They'll try to get the first through the air. Snagged on the outside, it's Nair. He's run out of bounds after the big game, and they are in business first and goal. Well, a field goal kicker can step away from the net and go sit down, grab some water. They're not, they're not going to need him just quite yet. That was a great play call. Throwing the ball on third and short in field goal range. They get the completion, now setting up first and goal. A first down run in the red zone. He pushes his way down to the four as they get closer and closer. Now on second and goal. Quarterback on the keeper. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, they're trying to go option, but the linebacker shows his open field tackling ability and also his recognition. He expected the quarterback to keep it, went after him, was able to make the tackle for loss. This offense hasn't been able to find the end zone with a GPS and a slide rule. Can they finally get a touchdown on third and goal? Fires a bullet. Now it's picked off. And as a defensive lineman late in the game, man, when you know it's passed, you're pinning your ears back trying to get to the quarterback. And DBs are trying to do this. Pad them stats, get the INT. Nice job by this DB. guys roll that offense back out there they unleashed an aerial assault last time that took them right to the end zone David so Reese with that drive I think you've accomplished something you wanted to accomplish make this defense think you put them back on their heels now shoot Palmer you might be able to slip a few runs in on this drive to really jack them up yeah I like that idea but I also like the fact that speed kills and they've got it at the receiver position so if you've got one-on-one -on -one matchups man take advantage they can really be aggressive after that last play. It's second and three. From the gun, he leaves it with the bat. He'll be stopped just short of the 20 at the 19. Give him one. You've got a third and manageable, backed up in your own end, but convert here and you get some momentum. To the ground to try to pick up the first. Gets the job done on third down as he gets it to the 25 before he's brought down. You know, you start day one of training camp running your base runs. You need a few yards, you run these plays. You need a first down, you run these plays. You rep them over and over and over again. They're not sexy, they're not pretty, but in the end, they're effective, and they get you that new set of downs when you need them. From the gun, running back gets to give. Can't get him to the ground. Picks up a useful five-yard chunk out to the 30-yard line. Really nice awareness by that guy, too, because it looked as though his momentum might carry him out of bounds, might stop the clock, but he knew to get down. He was fighting to make sure he fell down in the field to play, and as a result, the clock keeps ticking. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. They'll run it to keep this clock grinding. Finds his way for three after the 33. And now on third down after that last run.
trying to get the corner. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Well, you saw the speed on defense on that play. It's third and short. They're trying to go toss, but the defense's ability to go east-west and really scrape down the line of scrimmage, get to the ball carrier for a tackle for loss now setting up fourth down. The Buckeyes will call on their punt team. Really good job by the coverage team to make the stop, and that's where they'll put it in play. The Cornhuskers ready to go back to work on offense. That last drive was promising for a while, but you just can't mess it up at the end with the pick, Jesse. No, you've got to be able to finish drives, especially in this game, if you're going to win. And, David, they've got to be able to eliminate the mental mistakes. Yeah, and I don't think you get conservative or play it safe. You can trust your guy. I think you put the ball right back in his hands and let him do his thing. They'll snap this one from the 42. It's first and 10. Use the play fake. Now to throw. Unloads to the wideout. He's got an open man. Plenty of room on that play, and they find their way to the 36. And these quarterbacks have to really trust their wide receivers that they're going to be disciplined and run to the right route when they're throwing that ball to the outside like that because those corners are sitting there on the inside, and the worst thing that could happen is to miss inside and that cornerback get going the other direction. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we see miracles in college football all of the time, and they could use one here. They've got it at the 36 on first and 10. To the air, it's Rayola. He's got his man across the middle. They make the stop after the catch and still some work to do to pick up that first down. And listen, the defense playing really conservative, right? You got the lead, but here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get sacks. I got to get to the quarterback. Like, I got to make sure I'm getting him, knocking him off the spot, patting my stats, by the way. Got a lot of sacks late in games and we had a big lead, but that's okay. That's what you're supposed to do. Keep competing, defense. They keep attacking through the air. Fires left. A beautifully placed ball to the outside and the toe drag for the big pickup. When you're going to run a comeback route, you've got to sell like you're going deep. And that was a great job there by the receiver, really making that corner think he was running deep down the field. So we got the corner to turn his hips, turn his shoulders, and then the receiver was able to just pivot around to make it an easy pass and catch. Takes a snap, wants to throw. Got it. He gets it in. Touchdown, Nebraska. Nice job by the offense going down the field, putting points on the board, but you're still down a couple possessions. Still need some good things to happen. You need your kicker to go over there and get warmed up. We need an onside. We need to score some points. We need a lot of things to go right to win this football game. Now the two-point conversion attempt is coming. From the gun, looking for a man. He makes it in for the deuce, and now it's a 14-point game. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And they cap things off with a nine-yard touchdown pass. They're definitely up against it. Time running out, down two possessions. They'll try the onside kick. Few anxious moments there, but the hands team true to its name as they make the grab and get the ball. Here comes the Ohio State offense onto the field. They're in command of this game. Now let's see if they try to rub a little salt in the wound or happy with getting the W. Yeah, and listen, this, this makes the post-game handshake fun sometimes. If you do choose to rub a little salt in it and keep chucking and keep scoring, I'm here for it, Jesse. Like, your job is to score points. It's my job to stop it. Keep the foot to the accelerator. Keep trying to play ball. I agree a thousand percent. That's like Steve Spurrier back in the day when I was playing for the Gators. You go and play for him because you want the opportunity to, to throw the ball. So when you get in the game late, you're not handing it off. We were beating Central Michigan by 80-something points. He was still letting us throw the football. It's the defense's job to stop. They'll keep it on the ground, trying to milk the clock. 
He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Timeout called there by the defense, desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. The Buckeyes will send out the punt unit. He's getting a lot of work. Fourth time he's punted tonight. Make sure that there's not going to be a return on this one. Ball's out of bounds, and I think they'll mark it right around the 25. To throw, it's Rayola. Fires to the wideout. Just flying through the air like a superhero to make the grab. Well, this guy came ready to play today, man. That is an unbelievable diving catch. He has been unstoppable today. Over 100 yards receiving already. Doesn't matter where he lines up. But if you're going to make catches like that, you're going to get a lot of throws coming your way. We've still got a lot of football to go, guys. And the offense just going to spike it here. Offense gets set for second down. He's looking to throw. He's going up top here late in the game. That is a tremendous job by the defender on that play because when the ball was thrown, his head was turned around. He was watching the receiver, quickly spun the head, turned his shoulder, located the ball, and then knocked it down. Better find the earplugs. Here comes the noise. Backing this defense on third down. From the gun. Wants to pass. He's got it. They convert on third down as he gets it to the 46-yard line. When you're a playmaker like this guy is, your coaches are going to dial up plays intended for you, especially on third down. That's what you saw in that last play. There was no question where the quarterback was going with that football. All week long, they decided on the biggest downs of this game, we're going to target our best player, and we're going to make sure that he gets looks. It doesn't matter what the coverage is, and you saw it right there on that play. Now on second down. Looking for a man. It's Rayola. And he really needed to hold on to that one, but it was not loose, and third down is coming. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. On third down, he'll try to pick it up through the air. Got it in the middle, it's Fadeau. And this offense is feeling it as they rip off a big chunk of yardage and they've got it on the 22. This quarterback obviously did a lot of film prep coming into this one. He has been picking this defense apart. With that last completion, guys, he's now got over 300 yards passing. They'll rush to the line, clock stop for the first down. They'll set the chains and wind the clock. He'll spike the ball to try to save every precious second he can. Line getting set on second down. He's looking to throw. A shot toward the end zone. The pass is incomplete, and there are two ticks remaining on the clock. And I understand the logic by the offense here. Obviously, you're down in this game. You're trying to claw back into it. Why not take a shot? Why not be aggressive in that time? They just can't come up with a completion. And here we go. Final play of the game right here. On third and long, he has to throw for it. Catch in the middle. It's Nair. They make the stop, and the clock strikes zero, and that will do it for this one.